please welcome the very funny Julie Kim. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Wow, this is, this is amazing. This sure beats what I was doing last weekend. Last weekend at this very time, I was on a date. It was a setup with a man. Yeah. I don't know about these things. Some people think setups are awesome. I just think they're good for finding out that your friends don't think you're as attractive as you think you are. <laughs> oh. Oh. So this was not a good date. I didn't have a good time. Uh, we will call him Michael Green. Because uh, that's his real name. And, uh, he had a great time, though. He came skipping out of the restaurant, uh, which itself was a problem, I think. Because uh, he was not a little girl or in a Broadway play. You know? He was like, wow, that was so amazing. We even finished each other's sentences. And I was like, actually, you have quite a habit of interrupting people when they talk. And he said, okay, I'm sorry, I was nervous, but surely you picked up on this amazing chemistry that we had. And I said, oh no, sir, we don't have chemistry. I'm very interesting. That's... I really enjoy dating, I like it, and this seems really weird to my friends who always seem to be in relationships. Uh, and the thing is, I don't even think they like being in their relationships, they just don't like the alternative, the fear and rejection that comes with putting yourself out there, and I have never minded this. I read an article in a psychology magazine that kind of summed it up. It said that people with really high levels of self-esteem, maybe delusionally high, uh, may have said that, <laughs> It said that those people don't get battered and bruised in the dating process because they never attribute the failures to anything personal about themselves. <laughs> and yeah, and I realized that I do do this. I thought back to the most recent date I had before reading that article, uh, and it was the most perfect date ever. This guy was awesome, we got along well. I knew for sure this would last a while, but then after the first date, after three days, never heard from him. Yeah. And at first I was really, really bummed out about this, and then I came to terms and I was just like, well, that kind of sucks. I guess he died. Everyone's online dating now, and uh, some people are ashamed to uh, admit it, but uh, I really like it, because when I meet a guy in person, I feel so unprepared. I'm coming from the gym, I'm sweating, I might be on the phone. Worst of all, I'm bearing far too striking a resemblance to my actual self. You know? <laughs> Makes me uncomfortable. When a guy's hitting on me in person, I'm always like, oh God, uh, that's very flattering, thank you. Uh, but if you think I'm pretty, I should introduce you to my profile pictures. Oh my God. Because I do what every woman in here does. I post these awesome, unrecognizably hot profile pictures, right? We all do. We all have to because everybody else does. I'm not going to be the only ugly chick on the internet, right? Yeah. But lately, I've actually been worrying about us because I think that what we might be doing in the name of vanity could be compromising our safety. Because what would ever happen if one of us went missing? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Picture it now. You go home and you turn on the news and it's like, a 27-year-old woman from Vancouver has disappeared. Unfortunately, we only have her Facebook photos, so we don't know what she actually looks like. <laughs> This is where I get into a little bit of a, a personal kind of area. Uh, I am Asian, I wasn't gonna say anything. Um, I forget sometimes, I really forget, because I was born and raised in Ontario in a really, really small town. It was very secluded. I might even say it was kind of backwards and ignorant. So everybody in my class was white, and, uh, well, no, uh, there was one black kid in my class. Uh, his name was Black Justin. Um, <laughs> There were no other Justins, just to be clear. Hmm. 
I was very overweight as a child too, so yeah, it was hard. Uh, I think the worst part was the other kids, you know, kids are mean, they will bully you, they'll make fun of you, and they'll usually just make fun of the most obvious thing about you. It's not sophisticated, it's just, you know? So they made fun of me for being fat, uh, but they made fun of Justin for being black, which is how I learned that I was more fat than Asian. We were very poor too growing up, uh, and we're not now. My parents are fine, but they still have poor habits, like they go to garage sales, they hoard things, and they are extremely cheap. Uh, but I think the worst thing that they still do, well, actually, it's just my dad, it's so gross. Okay, I'll tell you. Uh, my dad, to this day, reuses dental floss. I know, oh, but wait, no, no, like he'll wipe it off after my mom's done with it, but still, it's disgusting. Thank you so much, Winnipeg. Good night. Stick around. John Caponera sweats the small stuff when we return.